Hello, everyone, and welcome to the sixth in our series of Ask the Experts interviews on the Thermal Scientific Orbit of Explorers 120 mass spectrometer. My name is Maciej Bromirski, and I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager for the Explorers product lines. And today we are speaking with Olaf Scheibner, who is the team leader of sales support for EMEA on the subject of data processing with Compound Discover. So, Olaf, start to please start presenting. Thank you very much, Maciej. In the series so far, we have looked into um, the instrument itself. We have looked into Acquire X uh, acquisition mode, and now we're looking into the software that puts it all together. So, um, Companies Cover, what we are looking at here, is a um, software platform for small molecule research, and we're looking specifically in the part of non-target screening in the software. So why would we do untargeted analysis? Um, with untargeted analysis, we are really looking into a sample and in an unbiased way. We are open for everything that can happen, even what we would not know to look for in the first place. Uh, we would have minimal method optimization and we could uh, retrospectively mine the data. We just have to take care um, that we have chemically very diverse compounds. We need to look into the challenges that come with isobaric, isomeric species. Uh, what databases to be used? Um, what tools do we have for true unknowns? And about identification. That's uh, where we can give some answers today, hopefully. Uh, we are looking into two types of unknown compounds, the so-called known unknowns, where we still have some suspicion and maybe look into large lists of compounds, but still we give an idea what to look for. And we have two unknown unknowns, where really it could be novel, nothing, something we have never seen before, or we at least didn't have in mind completely. Um, what we are doing here, in the first place, of course, we have samples. Um, this can be sample A and sample B, but this can be C, D, E, F, G. So the, the batches can be rather large and the uh, projects you're working on can be rather large. Um, major thing is we are looking into, in the first place, into difference between samples. We compare certain samples. We acquire the data on an accurate mass spectrometer, specifically the explorers uh, in this case. And once we've done that, uh, we go into data analysis and in compound annotation. <clears throat> and this part is what Compound Discover does. In the first place, um, <clears throat> when we do this uh, unbiased data mining, we find a lot of features. So basically every mass that occurs in any of the scans that have been run throughout the whole project and that shows chromatographic behavior is recognized as a feature. And this can be many, many features. Um, in average run, uh, on some food safety sample, for example, easily creates uh, 18 to 20,000 features. Um, but this can be a lot because it can be any mass. And we need to take care that we start to sort off adducts, for example, because that's an easy thing for the software to know certain mass differences that hint to adducts. Uh, and further on, um, with looking into um, isotope signals and others, we reduce the whole set of features already into compounds. Um, that saves us um, a lot of work to do when we reduce some 18 to 20,000 features to maybe eight to 9,000 compounds. It's still a lot, uh, but already a quite significant and intelligent reduction. And with these compounds, then we try to do some identification. Uh, we look into elemental composition. Um, we look into databases on the MS1 level, so like Camp Spider, for example. Um, and we look into fragmentation spectral match, so the MS2 level. And if possible, we can also look into uh, retention times if we have standards available um, with the same method. So this is a whole refinement process we are going through uh, to make life easier to bring some order into the chaos that just a big bunch of samples in unknown screening may represent in the first place. The power of compound discovery is that there is no fixed workflow you have to follow along and spend a lot of time on things you don't want to do possibly. Uh, but we have these little bits and pieces called nodes that you can align uh, to your own liking and can create something very simple that works out very fast. Or you can really do a deep dive once you know your sample a little bit better already. You can do a deep dive 
and really go to the last bits and pieces, which will take you more time, but reveal a lot of information. And according to your needs and your experience, you can design these, these workflows very easily just by picking the functions you would like to see um, and then shape the, the results accordingly. We, have, we, we are able to classify samples, so we can input already information that we know, um, like a certain uh, brand of food that you, that you've used, uh, the protection um, conditions, for example. There's, there's a lot of information that you have already about the different samples you're working with. And uh, in, in terms of this classification, uh, we can already input this information that helps a lot later um, to sort out information, to compare certain samples and to look into differences in order to boil down this, this vast amount of information that in the first place we create to something you can make sense of and that answers the questions you have once you start the acquisition of the samples and the, you start your project. Once you're coming to identification, we basically have uh, two important tools. Um, and this is um, the MG, um, so the spectral library search offline and online. Online, we are using in the mainly MC Cloud, which is our Thermo Fisher uh, online library. Um, uh, more than 18,000 components inside at the moment, still growing. Um, and uh, a good spectral representation because every compound has multiple spectra available. Um, and as it is online, the search works out very fast on this one here to give the, the best um, identification possible because. Um, the data that is inside there all has been acquired and orbited and simulation, so have the best fit of the spectral data to the data that you create yourself. As an example, uh, for example, let's look into some honey that may be um, adulterated with syrup. Um, so we created such a situation just artificially in the lab um, and just took some commercially available honey, some commercially available syrups, and started to look okay. Uh, how can the software help us to find uh, some hint for the adulteration? Um, so what we used was a quite quite simple um, full scale DAA analysis on the Explorers 120 um, with a um, HIDIC chromatography. So this was a very basic and straightforward setup, nothing very specific here uh, in order to capture as much as possible. And then we had a quite straight, straightforward workflow in Compass Cover, and just going along, detecting the components. This is this reddish purple uh, line you see on the vertical line, and aside to that more yellowish, you see certain steps for identification without going into all details right now. Um, but it's a straightforward um, unknown screening process in Compass Cover. So if you look into the data, that looks very colorful and quite complex, um, but in the end, uh, we found already as, as one of the top hits, we, we found one, um, one mass that seemed to be quite interesting. Um, it showed good statistical data. And if you follow on, on this mass, um, you can see here where we have some rapeseed honey, which is pure with almost no signal. And then starting with spiking this um, rice syrup into the rapeseed honey uh, with 5%, 10%. And you see how the signals are raising until we, we look into the pure rice syrup, then we have a complete match here. So we can already detect very easily um, a spiking of less than 5% rice syrup in honey, uh, which shows that it's pretty straightforward and easy to find some markers. And that would give us a hint um, for an adulteration, adulteration of honey, uh, because you see a signal here that pure honey should not give you. And this was not very much of doing. Compound Discover gave us this result very easily with, with, without much ado. So, as a conclusion, um, with the Explorers 120 Acquire X workflow and Compass Cover software, we have a quite complete solution for the processing of complex data sets. Um, we have a good connection to online spectral libraries. We have an intuitive workflow design, and we have the most suitable software for market discovery for food fraud and food safety. With that, I thank you for your attention. Great, thank you, Olaf. Uh, this was very, uh, very interesting presentation. Indeed, it shows the power of Compound Discover uh, software uh, with with the Orbit Explorers 120 and and the MZ Cloud Spectral uh, Library 
which uh, which you nicely uh, presented as well. So I'd like to also thank the audience uh, and uh, of course to learn more about the uh, latest capabilities of uh, this instrument you can visit our website at thermofisher.com slash Orbitrap Explorers 120 and with that uh, thank you again and uh, see you on the next uh, recording.